Hello, this video is inspired by a comment by Mr. Scotchpie stroke M7AGG who said, I've been watching some of your videos recently and I need to ask, as a guitarist who can strum a few tunes and play several classical pieces, how does one start learning jazz? I can't afford lessons, but I find your videos way too far ahead. I suppose I'm looking for a theory book like you find in the classical world that contains theory but disperses the theory of well-known solos arranged at the level the reader stroke student is at. A bit like the classic Frederick Noad classical guitar series, but for jazz. Okay, this is a great question. Um, actually, quite, quite complex to answer in some ways, because, um, first of all, I never used a book, and I didn't have many lessons. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so my, my, uh, my advice will be coming from, obviously, from my own personal experience. There's stuff I, I haven't had any contact with that people might be able to recommend. And if so, please pop it in the comments below. Um, I want to address a couple of points directly in, in, the, in the original post. So anybody doesn't know the Frederick Noad books, um, Pumping Nylon, I think. No, no, that's something else, isn't it? Frederick Noad, there's one and two, Sally Guitar one and two. They're, um, they're classic books and they're, you know, it's a good little sort of thing to go through if you want to learn to play classical guitar. Now for me, the problem uh, and brilliant thing about jazz is that it is not, it's not music you play on your own. You have to find other people to do it. So my number one point would be find somebody to play with. It doesn't matter how good they are. And if you're starting out, they'll be better than you, probably. So, you know, find somebody and, uh, and, and persuade them to play with you. Preferably uh, as many people as you can find in a room. A band would be great, but like one person, guitarist, sax player, singer, whoever, that's a great start. Okay. This will make everything flow a lot more naturally. It will give it a focus. As I say, I didn't use a book. What I did do is from day one, uh, and my first contact with jazz was actually as a player, stupid that it might sound, I went to a weekend workshop, I was a blues guitarist before, and uh, it was a weekend workshop, and, and Dave Cliff was one of the teachers, I remember it really well, and uh, he basically said um, uh, a few things that I'm going to talk about later, but um, it introduced me right away to playing. So we were playing a blues, we were playing um, some modal tunes, simple stuff, autumn leaves, Nothing complicated, but that's my first introduction. I didn't really understand what jazz was, so I had to go back afterwards and start listening to it, and I fell in love, right? But initially it was coming from the point of view of, I can't do this, this is interesting, and then having to try and do it on stage for the first time, and then you know, being impressed by other people who had already studied jazz a bit and who were much better players at it than me, and just kind of um, going from there, really. And, and I think that social aspect of it was really important to me. Later on, I discovered a place... Um, uh, like a little group that met every week to play to play jazz and we had a tutor and then we'd go through tunes that was great um, I played in the school big band later on the university played in the university big band joined a small band played in the jam sessions uh, after I left uni I, I went and jammed uh, you know as much as I could um, so basically I was just kind of always playing and um, it's not everything because there are certain things that I you know, lacked in my playing, which I had to develop by going to lessons. But I didn't have that many lessons. I had maybe um, one or two lessons um, in the first couple of years. And the thing about jazz lessons is you get so much information from them. It takes you ages to to sort of uh, assimilate them. I, I, I try to actually have to really hold back on the amount of information I give in lessons because it's just overwhelming. You know, you can give you can give like one thing or maybe two things in a lesson. And that'll be enough to keep somebody going for a month or two, you know. So jazz is very information rich like that. If you're able to work on your own, you don't need regular lessons. You can just go and find a teacher, either online or in your local environment. I mean, it's probably better if you can play with them because experience is always best. But uh, And to play with them, you need to actually be in the room with them. It doesn't work on Skype. Um, but, you know, I do Skype lessons, for instance, as well. And there's a lot you can do with that. Um, so you find that person... You might get some information off them, you go away, you play with other people and you work on your stuff. Right, okay. So that's the process that I followed and I don't think it's done me too much harm. Um, there are some things about my practice uh, when I was starting out, uh, practice and sort of approach to music which were lacking. Um, uh, some things that I will say, you know, I would, I would rather people would do and I realised now that I wasn't doing them and that was a problem. But I think the big, the really good thing about what I was doing was that immediate hands-on experiential way of learning and I think that's great and I, the, the more of that you can do the better. Okay so um, 
I'm going to boil this down to a few notes now. So I didn't, I don't, I haven't, I don't think a book like the Nerd book exists really. Um, I think there's a Mickey Baker book. I think a lot of people have used. They quite like that. But I mean, jazz is for me a social music. It's community music. You get together. You play music together with other people. Like solo jazz guitar, fine. I mean, you can get a book of arrangements and learn how to play them. It's, you know, but that to me isn't really jazz. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, but it's not. It's not what interested me about the music. So. Um, with that in mind, uh, key skills, key things to practice when it's starting out. So you've got to get, number one, you've got to get people to play with. I can't emphasize that enough. It could just be one person, could be a band, could be a workshop, could be a regular meetup, could be um, something completely informal. It could turn into a gig, it might never leave your house, it doesn't matter. You've got to have somebody to play with. That's really important, that's number one. Okay, number two, learn some chords and the Way I would suggest doing that is look at my shell voicings video. I'll attach a link below. That kind of gives you the basics you need to know. This is coming to you uh, from me, uh, from originally Dave Cliff. That, that, that's, that, that was what was in my first lesson. Another thing he said was learn the melodies, okay? And the best way to do that is by using your lug holes, by using your ears. Lug holes is what Dave Cliff would say, use your lugs. Um, so, you listen and you try to copy and it's going to be painful at first, but that is such an important thing to do. You don't have to be copying down, you know, incredible complicated bebop solos or anything. That that can wait. But to start off with, just being able to work out the melodies for Autumn Leaves or Misty or whatever the, the standard that you're looking at is, is great. Later on you can look at more complicated things like Anthropology, but for the moment just concentrate on learning simple, singable melodies. You can also maybe work on a few licks of simple solos, things like Jim Hall, Chet Baker, okay? That's thing number three. It's really important. The ears are really important. Four, fretboard mapping, right. So I've got a video about um, running scales in one octave. That's a good way to practice them. You only really need like one or two scales to start off with. The dominant mixolydian scale and the major will probably do you. It's actually more important to learn chord, uh, chord tones. So there's ways of doing that. I, I like to just play them out of the chord. So if you've got a, um, you know, you hold down the C major voicing and then you play all of the C major notes, C major seven do this, uh, or you could play, uh, you know, an A minor seven chord and then, you know, play the chord tones around it. Um, that in itself won't get you towards playing music, but it will help a lot because you'll be able to express the harmony, okay? That, that's the really important fretboard mapping. But because you're doing thing three, which is the ear thing, you'll also be listening out for actual jazz vocabulary, even, even the vocabulary and actual vocabulary, vocabulary, even the vocabulary in, uh, <laughs> in actual um, like jazz standards is still, uh, is still useful jazz vocabulary because you can improvise on the melody, right? Um, and then thing three, that, 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 will, uh, that will help with thing four. Those two things will go together. So you'll know the neck in a theoretical sense. You'll go, oh, these are the notes of an E minor arpeggio, but then you'll also be able to relate that to a melody. And this, this is gonna get tighter and tighter as that goes on. Um, theory, the only theory you really need to think about is, it's this chord and what notes are they playing on it? So if like somebody looks like they're outlining what you recognize to be an E minor triad and they're on a C chord, for instance, that's something you can store up, okay? It's got, okay, that's interesting. And then you can look through theory books to try and work out what's going on, but it's much better to do it that way around than to try and think, oh, I've got to read all the theory and then use that to justify my playing. That's poison, that won't work. You've got to go from the point of view of, you know, hearing things and trying to work things out, trying to work out what's going on. And it's a lot more fun, believe me. Okay, so four things. So let's recap, summarize, okay? Number one, find people to play with. Number two, learn chords and learn how to play them through tunes. Number three, learn some melodies by ear. Number four, map the fretboard out in terms of chord tones and simple one octave uh, scale. That's it. Practice that 15 minutes a day and go out and play as much as you can with other people and you will learn, okay? I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.